Hi folks, welcome to this SCBA Christmas cast podcast. Is that a bit better? <laughs> Joff, you're a nightmare. Inspire, connect, resource, growing healthy churches. It's in relationship for God's mission. Um, I'm Amy and I'm in a sunny Didcot for once, so that's very nice. I'm Dave, and I'm in a sunny Whitney as well. It's beautiful outside. Allison here in Bister, some sun as well. Hey, hey. Yep. I was really hoping you'd be in the US, actually. That would be really cool. But... <laughs> I know. Sorry to let you down. I'm Claire, and I'm in Wokenham. Um, I think it was just raining, but, and it's definitely raining out there. I can hear the cars going through the puddles. Um, so, yeah, but it's blue skies at the moment. Uh, I'm Colin, uh, living in Barton on Sea near uh, New Milton and it's unusually cloudy at the moment. Hi, I'm Joff Hunt and I'm located in Lapland somewhere near Southampton and Winchester Uh, and we've had some sunshine, some rain and even a rainbow this morning. So Christmas is coming, so are we all looking forward to it? Oh, Chris, well, um, I'm really kind of fortunate in that. Um, there's me and my husband, my mum and my dad and my nan, and so we're a three kind of household situation, so we can, without any kind of additional complications, we can all meet up, and so that'll be really nice. And I do like a good card game, and you can play some good card games with that sort of number of people, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to that very much, mm-hmm. spending time with my family. Really looking forward to seeing our son, Tim. He's just landed back from Munich and he'll be with us and our daughter Lucy so last time with her on her own as it were with us because she gets married later in the year. Yeah this is a unique Christmas Um, I've lived in the UK for 15 years and somehow I've made it always to the States for Christmas so this is the first one here so creating new memories so it's going it's going to be wonderful and chaotic and splendid all wrapped up into one the family I'm, (laughs) I'm bubbling with have five young kids so it's going to be a Christmas morning like no other. Um, looking forward to it. It's going to look unique for you, Dave? Uh, possibly. It depends on what the Welsh Government decide in the next few days uh, because there's, uh, there's calls for new lockdowns in, in Wales. So uh, the plan is that we're going to try and get across the bridge. Um, but if, uh, if not, we've got one heck of a lot of ice cream to eat back in Whitney, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> My husband, Neil, and I are going to spend Christmas Day by ourselves, which we've never done before at home, which will be different, and I think it'll be really special. Uh, We're just a bit sad that we won't get to see my... because of my brother and his four children, because that's already three um, bubbles, but it'll still be very special. We'll see my dad on Boxing Day, so, yes. Yeah, and we're similar as well. We're spending Christmas, just the three of us. The ramifications around all the family connections were just so complicated that it did our head in. So in the end, we just went, you know what, close the doors and just we're going we're gonna to get some beef wellington in and enjoy a really good meal. Yeah. I, looked, uh, I looked at trying to get a hold of a fire pit um, just, just to sort of make it possible to meet outside. But then the weather's been so bad, I thought, no, this is, you're just far too ambitious. It's never going to happen. So, <laughs> I think we really deserve a white Christmas this year. It doesn't look like it's going to be so, but uh, I just felt, you know, everyone deserves to get up Christmas morning with snow on the ground across the country. That would just be, that would put would, a smile on their faces. Wouldn't, wouldn't that it? be fab? It would. Wouldn't yeah. that be fab? Because you can have a snowball fight at social distance. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been quite a year, hasn't it? Uh, so it'd be good just to look back over the year for, for a moment or two. And I, I've asked you to kind of come up with a, you know, something that's positive about the year, because I think there's some, been some really positive things, but also something that uh, perhaps has been challenging or not so good. Uh, so again, let's, let's, let's go around the room. Dave, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, I, th- I think some of the positive um, things that uh, I, I've really appreciated, it's just the way that so many of our churches have grappled with uh, this new world and the way that they've engaged with technology and uh, especially some of our smaller churches who may not have got the sort of large tech teams or whatever, but how they've uh, really 
gone above and beyond to try and communicate with uh, with their people. I've actually found that uh, really good. And also the way that um, they've seized the uh, initiatives in trying to really connect with their communities. They've seen need, and so many of our people have responded in uh, in just very practical and caring ways. I really I love seeing... Um church is much more embracing supporting families and rather than everyone sort of splitting off into different age groups it's been much more kind of cohesive and joined up and yeah and resourcing families to be able to sort of share faith and do faith in the household I think that's been a real blessing um, for the church um, at, during this time and for the families during this time and then on a sort of personal thing I've really um, developed some healthier patterns and rhythms and done more regular walking and um, breaking up the day in that way so trying to create that space and um and I've met friends not met friends like I didn't have any friends but like I uh, went with friends and uh, <laughs> I made some new friends uh, and um and it was and, and I've really appreciated having those sort of times with, with friends as well so that's been nice well what's, what's been the challenge of the year for you Claire um I don't know. I, I'm a pretty steady as she goes kind of person, but I was up and down. Do you know what I mean? And I was, and that took me a bit unawares. And I definitely had to put some stuff in place to help me kind of do the bit more steady as she goes again. And uh, so, and I, I wasn't expecting that from me. Um, yeah, I thought I'd be a bit more kind of. But it was definitely a bit like, oh, today I feel like this, and tomorrow I'm going to feel like this, and it was like much more like that. And that I found that a bit of a, a bit of a challenge because it was unusual for me. <laughs> I think two things I've reflected on is one, hospitality is really important to me and I enjoy it. And that's been more limited, how you can express that and do that. So there's a sadness around that this year. And very simply, I'm a hugger, I'm a physical touch person. So just having less hugs or being able to give hugs has been a sadness this year. So that's been hard. But what's, what's, what's been your joy? Mine has been very simply, I came up with, I've read more this year just for pleasure. Usually I read uh, my mystery novels on holiday alone, but I've gone through quite quite a few books this year, especially on that first lockdown where we had such great weather and there was just limited things you could get out and do. Um, I read a lot of books, so that's been a joy. I think what's been resourcing is it, every time there's been a bit of good contact with someone, um, and that that that's actually had much more of an effect than in an average year, simply because actually I appreciate it more, I value it much more. So um, I was thinking actually, what would this have been like to go through this if um, if we hadn't got all the ways of linking online? Although we're all exhausted from Zoom and Skype and WebEx and all those things. Actually, what would it have been like? We so actually, uh, I'm not going to complain about uh, even what we're doing now because I think it's been just such an incredible gift, given what we've been trying to cope with. So, um, and quite often it's been been the Zoom connection that suddenly made me feel alive again, however bizarre that may seem. The the challenge it's been an, an emotional roller coaster for me, like so many others. Um, I've really missed the face to face work. And I've learned that actually I rely massively on the synergy, um, uh, the spirit working through people being together in a space. And I don't sense it being so easy to do that online. So actually the challenge has been that. And then personally, um, I've had a, a, a sort of bit of an extra layer with, uh, as lots of people know, uh, a very significant eye problem that really is, has been going on for a year. I'm so grateful that it's managed more in the last three weeks or so. But it's meant that uh, everything has been very, very hard going and everything has been hard going anyway. So so that's been the, that's been the challenge. Like Alison, well, like all of us, really, I'm a real people person. So I've really missed that connection. I've missed being at Baptist House with all the staff there. And also because I've been having to shield in both lockdowns, um, it's been really difficult not just not being able to go out of the house. You don't realise it until you're not allowed to go out. You know how much you miss it, you know, just going over that doorstep. So, it, yeah, it has been challenging sort of emotionally as well, up and down, like Claire said. But, you know, I'm just, you know, like Colin, I'm grateful for Zoom meetings, being able to catch up with people online. And I'm grateful for my husband for being my man on the outside who's, who's done everything while I've not been able to go out. 
the thing I celebrate is my my church. I'm a member and administrator for a, quite a small church of elderly and mainly black people in Cowley in Oxford, and I just love the camaraderie that they've just all come together, and you know they've just been in contact with each other. They've looked up out for the more elderly ones and just having doorstep visits and things. And I've also been really pleased that I've learnt new skills. By using YouTube, um, a couple of weeks ago, I live streamed an Afro-Caribbean funeral across the world, which is something I would never have dreamt I would be able to do. So, yeah, so, but yeah, it, I'm just really proud of our church family. Mm. Yeah, it's great. I guess uh, for me, uh, the challenge the challenge and the joy have kind of come together in, in one sense. They're t- two sides of the same coin, because I think my... My biggest challenge is being indoors for too long a period of time. I'm quite an adventurous person. I knew I was adventurous, but I really understood myself better this year. That's a positive, I guess, that I, I am someone that needs to go and do something that is is different, that uh, gets me out, sees, sees things that I haven't seen before. Um, so there have been moments when I felt really claustrophobic and uh, I call it cabin fever. In fact, it was three days where I, I went out the back door after three days and suddenly realised I hadn't breathed in fresh air for three days and suddenly realised I just got caught up with this kind of busy period, which, which wasn't good for me really. But the, the positive side to that is it has forced me to go and be adventurous in a different way. So I haven't fallen into adventure, I've been more in, in, intentional. Uh, so gone to see places that I've never been before and I've done a couple of really long walks as well which I've really enjoyed one nearly killed me probably <laughs> went a little bit too too far after 30 miles uh, but, the, but uh, the second one which was about 20 miles just really enjoyed just walking uh, and doing those walks on, on my own uh, one I did with a friend and the other just on my own and uh, that was just a really precious time um, as well yeah, I was thinking what- Geoff, when you were saying about like the the joys and the challenge, I was I was as we were like just I was just like being pondering. I I did have a, I loved the joy and the challenge at the beginning. Do you remember when everyone went a little bit kind of crazy about food in terms of even stockpiling it? I did the whole opposite. I thought I'm going to use up everything that's in my cupboard, kind of thing, and all this out of date stuff. And I loved the challenge of making these bizarre recipes out of preserved lemons that I didn't know that I had in the back of my cupboard, kind of thing. And um, and then the joy of being able to sort of make all that because it was quite a creative time of making these bizarre dishes out of this random food that I had left in the house. I don't know if anyone else did that with their um at that very beginning stage when we were all just cooking random stuff of leftovers. And I found out I had so much out of date food in my house. It was disgusting. But I ate it. But it was it was. Fun. It was and, you, and you saying about not going out? I realised at one point that no, I hadn't worn shoes for two months. Wow. I hadn't actually stepped foot out. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, not wearing jeans for the whole two months. <laughs> That's amazing. Dave, I wasn't sure whether you gave us a challenge. I think you spoke about a joy, but at the beginning, did you give us a challenge that you faced? Oh, I, I, I think um, I, I, I relate this so much to what Alison was saying. Uh, you'd be quite surprised to know I'm quite a huggy person too. Uh, so um, I, I've actually really missed that interaction. Uh, with our people. Uh, it's been good to talk with them on the phone and uh, and to be able to use uh, streaming uh, uh, platforms like this. But actually just to get alongside them uh, and be with them is something that I've really struggled with. Uh, and uh, and a bit like uh, a bit like Claire was saying earlier, I, it, it impacted me. I can't remember when it was in the year now, but I just sent, I just had this sadness in me and thinking, oh my goodness, I am so missing people. And I, I know this is going to sound a bit whatever, but just missing contact with you guys. Uh, you know, uh, Joth and I met up briefly yesterday um, and it's the first time we've seen each other since the summer. And, uh, and you just think, oh my goodness, I've, miss, I've missed this, you know. And of course, uh, I'm getting together for a coffee tomorrow with a, another member of the team who might be smiling right now. And, uh, and I'm, I can't wait, do you know what I mean? And so uh, these, these, in normal times, these are quite small things, but actually they seem very significant right now. I was thinking oh, that was co- the most positive thing the whole year, actually, Dave. <laughs> oh, Thanks, <laughs> Colin and I met up in Limington at one point and uh, we, we, we walked past each other almost not recognising each other because we hadn't seen each other for such a long time. To be fair, he, you had uh, your he, flat he cap did, on. 
Uh, yeah, I did have my hat on, and and Colin did have a mask on, so that didn't help. But but people look different, don't they? In real life, yeah, they just, suddenly, yeah. well, they just come back to life again. I just thought it'd be interesting to ask you the question: Who, uh, which character in the nativity scene, the traditional nativity scene and story, uh, resonates with you, or has particularly jumped out of the pages of scripture, perhaps for you uh, this year? Uh, other than you can't pick Jesus, okay? This is embarrassing, but I wasn't going for Jesus. I was going for the donkey. Um, and I, I know that is embarrassing, but I, 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 do, I do like that donkey. What about the Chris mouse? Uh... I'm, going, I'm going for the mouse. Having been bitten by a mouse two weeks ago, <laughs> uh, I'm going for the mouse. What? Well, our Not cat so brought well. a mouse in. In my yeah. wisdom, when she dropped it, I decided I just... Uh, manfully reach down and grab it and put it out the door oh, and um, the mouse had other oh. ideas really and I held on to it for about half a second uh, <laughs> uh, 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 because it, it bit me rather hard I actually had to go to the doctor and get some antibiotics that's yeah. how sad it was yeah yeah oh, um, if, they, if, if they draw blood um, you can yeah. get an infection so um, 111 said I had to go to the doctor I felt a complete fool <laughs> <laughs> Claire, what, who, who would you choose and why? It would probably, it's normally, well, I, I, lo I love Mary. I, I think, um, yeah, I think her her poem, her song is, is, is powerful. Um, I love it that she's, the liberation kind of theologians are drawn to her as well. Um, and I just, just think, my, my mate said, we, there was this image of Mary we were reflecting on and, uh, and she was smiling, like, like a, a new mum, like smiling, showing off her child. And then she talks about actually, but imagine the pain, her body, you know, being torn apart kind of thing, practically. And, um, and, so, and, and so it held so much. And I just love it that the so much power um, is given to a, a young woman. Um, I think that's really incredible and that God trusted her, you know, to raise, to raise Jesus, to raise his son. And, and um, I just think there's so, so much just in Mary's story. For me, it's Mary uh, as well. And, um, you know, to be the God, to be God bearer, <laughs> to use that language, which is sometimes used of Mary, is I just can't get my head around it. It's so extraordinary. Yeah. And her yes is just the most extraordinary yes, without <laughs> really knowing everything that it would mean. Yeah. I mean, because you never know what it means when you say, yes, you're going to have your first child <laughs> and all that's going to come with it. But her yes was absolutely uh, stunning. So, yes, uh, inspired by her. Do you know the song uh, No Wind at the Window about Mary? No. You have to look it up on YouTube. It's a really incredible song. Can you sing it to us, Amy? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'd try. No, it's a, it's, it's, it's a really lovely song about Mary. So, so would yours be Mary, could it, Amy? Uh, no, actually, I would, I would be really soppy and say the angels, and that, um, <laughs> and I just, I always remember, even as an adult, um, the Reverend Doctor Nick Wood, when he was a minister at our church, made me play um, Angel Gabriel even as an adult, and didn't tell me till the day we I turned up to church to play the piano that I was playing this character. But also, one of my guilty secrets is my favourite program is You've Been Framed. And at the moment, it's got the they're they're re showing all the Christmas ones and all the little angels on there. Are just so sweet, but I just, <laughs> I just think it's such a central character, and it's yeah, that's my favourite, my favourite character. Dave, well, I, you know, I, I think my number one choice would would be Mary. I think I think uh, quite remarkable the courage of that <laughs> young woman, um, and and how she was prepared to be. Um, used in, in, the, in the most amazing way in, uh, and the impact it had on, on her uh, but I, I'm going to I'm going to plumb for Joseph right now uh, because every time I read about Joseph uh, and he's connecting with God he's fast asleep and so um, it, it's quite remarkable that the time that God communicates with him is when he's got his Z's and he's snoring his head off and so I think it's a it's a reminder to each of us that sometimes actually just stopping <laughs> there's more of a chance we might hear God Alison, who would who would st stand out for you? 
Uh, when you asked it earlier, um, the first um, group I thought of were, were the shepherds. I think, I, I can't imagine being in their place of life and their role of life, just going about their daily jobs well and being um, overwhelmed. And it actually says terrified by the angel and the message. And then the, the chorus of angels that come and speak of Jesus's birth. Um, and I think, I think I'm always struck by that, just who they are and that the news came to them and that that brings hope for us. I think I also recognize just in myself, like leading up to Christmas and then and reflections around the shepherds, I'm at my best, my personal best when I'm filled with awe and wonder. That's how God's created me. I'm, I'm just, I'm more generous. I'm more grateful. I'm more thankful. I'm more playful when I'm filled with awe and wonder. And there's something about the shepherds, I think, being terrified. But then uh, let's go and see. And just that awe and wonder of what have we experienced and what will we experience that I'm really captured by. And I think it's a personal calling for me in life. Um, so, yeah, the shepherds. I think for me, uh, they, they don't appear in the traditional nativity scene, these two characters. But Anna and Simeon, I think, aren't talked about enough. And for this year, you know, being in lockdown where things are restricted, where there was a sense of crying out to God. Anna and Simeon are these kind of waiting people, aren't they? They're waiting for the dawn of God to begin, the birth of Christ the Messiah to come. Uh, and so they always strike me as these patient, prophetic, uh, godly, righteous people um, seen in the temple regularly. They kind of struck me as uh, people that saw the dawn arise um, and uh, yeah, just just excite me. Um, and I think they're a great, great, uh, a great illustration for us, a great example for us uh, in this period of kind of waiting for COVID to come to an end. We were restricted, calling out on God, but God's work will continue. God will do what God will do. Uh, so those, those two stand out for me, Anna and Simeon. As we kind of turn our thoughts from Christmas and then into the new year, and so as we go into the new year, you know, vaccines are on the horizon, uh, things are going to begin to change. What, what, are, our, what are we looking forward to um, in 2021? Uh, and I guess we could say the obvious things, you know, seeing each other again, but is there something more that we're praying for and hoping for? Um, Claire? Um, I, it's to do with, because I don't get the opportunity to do this, but I'm really hoping that, um, when, you know, restrictions ease and all that kind of stuff, that churches will engage with their schools. And I'm really kind of passionate about that at this time. It just feels a kind of a, a God moment. And I think there's so much that the churches could offer the schools. And I don't know if any of you heard the prayer broadcast with Lynn and Steve Chalk. It was absolutely brilliant and um and she sort of and he was talking about schools and I've always oh, been listening to me because he was he's basically quoting me I think and um and 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 he basically just rattled he goes why are you sticking with just doing assemblies there's there's so many more opportunities and he listed just as said just loads of opportunities and he goes as long as you don't want to go there and sort of kind of you know preach the good news in the traditional sense he goes that the doors are open if you're willing to serve your schools and to love your schools and and um and i i'm just really excited about that and i think it's a real kind of um uh, lynn uses this term uh, moving at the pace of love and in terms of building relationships it's a really slow burn but building relationships with schools i think can take a long long time but if you've got those foundations in place over a period of years when it's good to go, it's really good to go. And then, then loads of opportunities can be kind of g given to you. So I just really think, and I really hope that the churches connect with their schools and do that kind of the, the long burn of building up the relationships with schools. Um, I think there, there could be a real gift for the pupils and the staff in the schools. So that would be my hope once the restrictions have eased. I love that response from Claire. Um, we really do need to put children and young people right at the heart of everything we do within church life, I think. Um, but I was going to go take a different tack and, uh, and just get very personal in the sense of uh, I just want a bigger vision of God. Um, I want um, this has been a demanding year for all sorts of reasons, hasn't it? Um, and uh, and I've, I, I've found uh, in the year um, there have been peaks of tr and troughs in terms of peace and joy. 
And when I've tried to distill um, down in terms of what, why that is, I think it was just a, 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 a vision of God that just wasn't big enough. Uh, there, there wasn't, um, there wasn't the, the natural childlike trust and confidence in him uh, that perhaps I should have had and uh, definitely should have had. And so for, for me, it's very much a work in progress of, um, uh, to use the, the words of Alison, uh, having this awe and wonder of God increasingly in my life. Uh, and that just doesn't happen. That just doesn't happen for me. I, I just have to take some space and create, uh, create those moments where I can actually gaze uh, into his face. And so uh, I know that's fairly deep and whatever, but, um, uh, but it's just true. I just want a bigger vision of him because uh, I just want to, I want to be more alive. I want to be more alive in his presence and more alive for the people that, uh, that I serve. I'm still thinking about what I'm trying to accomplish next week. <laughs> so, okay, 2021. Um, I mean, firstly, it, feel, it overwhelms me thinking of it because, I don't know, there's something about going from 2020 to 2021. I'm like, oh, gosh, the numbers are too great. Uh, just the fact that we're almost in a new year. I really have to trust the Lord with time and um, so that you know I have overwhelming thoughts actually when I think of 2021 just a new year approaching so that's something I'm on a journey with God for but when it comes to what I'm looking towards or what I'm excited about or what I'm dreaming about very much rooted in the practical um, for kind of my local team and for friends and even for myself there's been many phrases I've heard this year such as uh, once we get to normal, uh, I'm going to do this differently. Or uh, I've learned I can't go back to the ways I've done things. And kind of how people are, how they, how they're doing their emotional health, their physical health, their spiritual health, all aspects of holistic health. I've heard a lot of people I dearly love, um, whether that's who I work with or friends or family, just speaking about what could be um, out of what they've learned, and. I feel that as a personal challenge of, yeah, what God has shown this year, or what, what we've all learned about ourselves, or where we're at our best, or what do we really need to be faithful to God's vision he's given to us. And so I, I actually feel like at this stage, I'm kind of in the wait and see of what will emerge once we hit more normality. Will we revert back, or will we actually... Um, one of the phrases I use with the students I work with often is how can God concrete the truths you've heard from him so it's not it doesn't slip away in the next week or the next message what are the things he's really trying to root you in and so those are some of my hopes and kind of the anticipation of the things that we've learned from God um, whether that's in the practical or the spiritual sense of are we going to take this to heart and how will that, that impact how we live in this new time um so i feel that personally but i'm longing mm. that for friends and teammates and people too that we we all um enter this new year having learned some good things that we apply mm. uh i really resonate with that allison um Thanks for that. That's that's kind of kind of sits where where I'm at. I think there've been some great lessons. There should have been some great lessons that we've learned from this precious year. It's been a difficult year, challenging year. Uh, COVID has not been easy for anyone. But in that moment, we should have learned a lot about ourselves, but each other, and what's really really important about our faith, about our worship, about our love of God about the way we relate together, what church is, uh, and and what it means to us to share that good news with, with other people. And if we don't take those lessons into the new year, then, you know, what was this year for? The, these are the precious things, I think, that 2020 give us that we take into the new year. And I'm kind of excited to see how that new year might look uh, as we really learn what is most important. Uh, and what isn't important and what we can leave behind you know those things that we can leave behind and they're really really important things that we can take into the future and I think my prayer is for the church particularly is that we we do look younger we, we look to the younger generations to enable them to give them the freedom to express faith and their love of Christ in the way that 
make sense to them um, and allow them to influence and kind of mould uh, what church looks like for the future. So I'm looking forward to a year that looks a bit different. Uh, Amy, what are your thoughts? Well, going back to what Claire was saying about working in school, for the last eight or nine years, um, I've been doing a lunch club with a local minister, Hugh Borman, which is kind of like a Bible class for mainly non-church children in Key Stage 2. And of course, that hasn't happened since March. And I really, really miss it. I miss the interaction with the children. And and I realise now that there's some children there that have now moved on to secondary school, which I will probably never see again. So I really do hope that that when the vaccine comes and things sort themselves out, that that will start again and that we'll be able to start this this interaction with the children and teaching them simply about the Bible and the good news about the Bible. And also, I will be very excited for the time when we can um, meet together in church without having to do a seating plan. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. <laughs> and telling people uh, where to sit, saying, no, you can't sit there. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, Colin, are you looking forward to 2021? I am looking forward to it, partly because even if it's just psychological, there's something about the sense that you've entered into a new year after the one we've just we've just had. But there's something uh, that I think is has got continuity with this year, and that is, um, do you remember when uh, in the early days of uh, all of this kicking off, we all became much more observant, uh, or at least many people did, and they noticed things in the natural world that. Uh, they wouldn't normally do or they were stuck in their garden so all you could do is watch you know at, uh, at a, a terrible terribly slow pace the worm emerging from the earth or the ant crawling from one blade of grass to the other whatever it's some really really tiny things and my prayer and hope is that the um the paying attention that uh, was forced on us in a way and then we were surprised at and amazed at that actually we don't lose that and it, it sounds like a sort of a very woolly thing, but as the years gone, it seems gone on, it seems to me that there's been a, a rise in anxiety and uh, tetchiness and uh, people really missing being driven and therefore wanting to drive themselves or others in some way to make uh, make things happen or get things better. Um, and even a sort of a blaming thing. And it's really important to name some of those realities, but some of that is the inability to actually say, let it be to me. <laughs> Some of it's about not simply not being able to accept as gift what we do have and what is there and that God is still fully God um, in those moments. So I, I love, um, not, not, not that Mary, but a different Mary, Mary Oliver, you'll know that she's a favourite poet of mine and she, she gives instructions for living a life in this terribly short poem and she says, pay attention be astonished tell about it and it seems to me that's the whole theme of emerging is around that Alison that you were talking about the emerging thing is paying attention being astonished and telling about it or working out what to do with it uh, telling is one of, Mary does that of course in the Magnificat doesn't she um, so this is where I need to stop Josh forgive me thanks Colin and uh we probably all need to stop ready because uh, our time has beaten us so thanks for all your contributions it'd be good to just wish everyone a really happy christmas so let's just quickly go around the room you can jump in when you want so off you go we would say in the states merry christmas so merry christmas yeah, happy christmas everybody uh, and uh, have a, a, a blessed happy year. christmas and thank you for all that you've been doing this past year happy christmas everybody Happy Christmas. God bless you in it and through it and into 2021. Have a great Christmas, everybody. God bless you. <laughs> See you soon. Ho, ho, ho. Inspire, connect. Resource. Growing healthy churches. It's in relationship for God's mission.